Hi, welcome back to BRMC's Healthy Connections. Special guest today, Jody Bodenhammer, a registered nurse who happens to be the coordinator of the Repel Diabetes Learning Center. And we've been talking about all the different monitors that we've had a chance to look at today. Uh, Jody bought four different kinds, letting us know that there's 65 out on the market. No wonder the poor public is confused. So, Jody, what else is going on? You were talking before the break about uh, support groups that Repel has. Yes, we have two um, specific support groups. We have uh, obviously a type 2 support group because type 2 diabetes is very common. Mm -hmm. About 90% of folks with diabetes have type 2. Um, now, and is we, that insulin? Uh, that is usually, d to begin with, non-insulin dependent. Non-insulin dependent, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And, and we meet monthly, regular basis. We meet on the fourth Tuesday of every month Okay. Um, over at the large dining room at the hospital at 5 p.m. Each month we have a different speaker, a different topic, um, lots of information. We'll have um, local businesses that may have some, some kind of diabetic product or something specific for mm -hmm. our patients. And then a lot of times we'll have different physicians that come and speak to us about different uh, illnesses pertaining to, I know Dr. Moore came and spoke with us last year about um, different types of, of osteoporosis and, mm -hmm. and bone loss and broken bones and the, right. the infrastructure there with diabetes. And then uh, recently we've had Dr. Wright come and speak. Um, he was actually talking about diabetic retinopathy and the changes in our vision. So that was really interesting. But we just try to, I try to coordinate that with, with our, not only our group, our support group, what they want, what they request. Sure. Um, but then also what we've got in our area, right here in Mountain Home and, and very close area that they have access to. Sure, um, for these a lot of resources. Different, oh I know, and it's, it's just amazing, you know, the differences um, that it can make once people get, get to the right resources that they need to be mm -hmm. at. Um, then our type one support group obviously is a little different. Um, with type one diabetes, we see that affecting um, mostly young folks. We have a lot of diagnoses um, before the age of 20. Really? That's yeah. mostly the cutoff yeah. there. However, I say that, and then there's always an exception to that rule because recently, um, in the past probably 10 years, we've seen an increase in adult onset type 1 as well. Hmm. And so we have a pretty vast group. Um, I call them the young and the young at heart <laughs> um, because we have kids from third grade all the way in their 60s and 70s. Um, and, and I do say kids because we, we get together and we do fun stuff yeah. and so we act like kids no matter how old we are. <laughs> um, our most recent adventure was, was going on a float trip which, which was just a great time and we try to do things because I feel like type 1 diabetes shouldn't be limiting and, and mm -hmm. it shouldn't limit no matter how old you are. Yeah. Um, and so I try to incorporate different activities and fun things for, for my kids and my adults to do together and then also give them a chance to network and see that, yes, the kids can, can kind of relate to the adults who've been, maybe been dealing with type 1 diabetes for a while, but the adults can also relate to the kids and they mm -hmm. remember those scary first years and, and the first insulin shots and, and how, you know, how much has changed since yeah. maybe they were diagnosed. And so I just have a great group. Um, we have about 30 regular folks that we try to get together with and meet up with and we might go bowling. Um, we, we may go on uh, just a day trip or an outing mm -hmm. somewhere. I remember when you went and zip lining. We went <laughs> zip lining a few years ago. I thought that was um, wonderful. It's sort of like my kids. They come up with these ideas, and, and I just say, okay, we'll, we'll, make, it, we'll make it happen. Yeah. We'll do it. And so we do. We have a great time with that as well. And I think the kids feel um, a greater sense of support when they know that, you know, hey, if I have a problem, I, I can call my friend. Or, or my moms can get together and they can call each other and right. network. If somebody's out of supplies or somebody needs something, then they've got that extra support here in Mountain Home. And that's really what we try to do is form those, those connections. I know mm -hmm. we have a, a few families that they've been bonded now for you know, eight or 10 years together mm -hmm. because of their children. Sure. And, and we're just taking in new folks all the time. Um, had a couple of, of girls that are recently diagnosed and um, they're really just, just taking it full on. And, explaining to their peers and helping out at their school and, 
It's just amazing rather what these than, kids rather can Rather than, oh my goodness, I'm different than everyone else. Sure, and, and, sure. And becoming the shrinking violet instead. And, right, and even as yeah. an adult, a young adult, you know, that can be a scary thing. You're in your early 20s, mm -hmm. um, you get diagnosed with this chronic disease, and, and you've, you've kind of learned to, to make it on your own for a little while, a few years, and then all of a sudden, oh gosh, you, you are having to deal with a whole new set of, of rules for life. And so it is, it's a challenge every day. Um, my patients inspire me, of course. And, and keep me going and we just Jan and I and Leslie just always whatever we can do to help we mm -hmm. we're there I know you're always there for all your patients whatever we can do to help and and that is our main focus um, the the big thing I'd like to share with everybody is if there's a question if there's an issue if something comes up um, just give us a call let us know what we can do to help we also Jan and I um, aside from doing our regular classes and programs there at the Diabetes Center go out in the community and educate about mm -hmm. pre-diabetes and diabetes awareness. Um, and so we, we speak to civic groups and social groups, church groups, um, what to look for, signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to get the word out there that yes, it can affect anybody, it can affect everybody. And, and I know that most people either have a, a friend or maybe even a family member with diabetes, and we were mentioning that support earlier, that's just a huge part of it. Um, I'm getting ready to do a um, series, and, and we've been working on this series about Diabetes 101 and just, just some basic Start with knowledge. The sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, like I said, I encourage anybody to come by. Um, and, me, and would you explain Jan's role as well? Jan, Jan is, our, is our dietitian. She's a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator, as am I. And she actually does all of our cooking mm -hmm. and our meal planning. And, and most people don't, if you have access to a, a certified diabetes educator, it's not a nurse and a dietitian, it's usually one or the other. What, yeah. And that is what just, I, I brag oftentimes, <laughs> I know I sound really, you know, <laughs> fancy, but I, I brag on, on Mount, little old Mount, Mount Home, Arkansas. Um, I was actually searching yesterday in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for a, a certified diabetes educator, couldn't find one. Yeah. Um, and, and we've got two we have, right here in Mount Home. Yeah. And so we're, we're looking at that. We, we kind of split up the education. Um, I, I'm very, very, very supportive of and, and encouraging Jan to get out there, do your cooking classes, mm -hmm. do what you do best because her passion really is about the food and making it taste good. And she does, mm -hmm. and she does. Jan has a portable kitchen that she'll take around. Yes, and we do. Maybe not in the hot weather, but <laughs> that she'll take around. And I know she's had it at the health fair in mm -hmm. April. We've had it a couple years in a row, and that's what a hit it has been. It is. With what she's created that is so good for you and tastes so good. And still tastes yeah. good. I yeah. think that's the common scare. Most people, oh, I have diabetes. I can't eat any sugar. I can't eat anything that tastes good anymore. Mm -hmm. And, and even some of the other disease processes that affect our nutrition and our health, um, sodium is a big topic right now. It's a yeah. very, very hot topic with cardiovascular disease, stroke and heart attack. Um, everybody's pushing for that low sodium diet. And Keep it's your sodium your down. It's in all your processed sure. foods, which is most of what's in the grocery store. Sure, and, yeah. and so we did a, a whole um, series of classes on that alone, just on the low sodium cooking. We also did a um, a dessert, uh, a healthy dessert, so that you're not getting a ton of extra sugar, mm -hmm. but how you can incorporate the use of, of fruits and other sweeteners um, to enable and, and to still get that cookie or that, yeah. that pie or that cake that you really want um, to where it's not just loaded up with, with lots of sugar and extra additives. Um, we recently did a gluten-free class, which mm -hmm. was real interesting. Celiac disease is more and more common. You go to the grocery stores now, you see the gluten-free products. Right. Um, and understanding a little bit more about that. It, is that related to obesity as well? It is not related to obesity. Celiac disease has to do with um, the stomach and the intestines mm -hmm. um, and a disease where that uh, wheat products in, in different um, capacities, you know, we think about wheat and I think about wheat bread, but there's so many things that have wheat, wheat derivatives, sure. yeah. yeah, and it actually um, damages the internal lining of your stomach and your intestines okay. where you, you're not digesting as well. Um, so that disease process in itself is so specific and a lot of people um, struggle with and have trouble. And I want to say, I've, I've been recently kind of been researching this along with Jan, and we have a lot of great support here in town in Mountain Home. Mm -hmm. The Harps, 
um, the grocery stores here, right. even the health food stores are starting to be supportive of that population of folks. Mm -hmm. But our final cooking class will take place in October, and I just wanted to encourage anybody that hasn't had a chance to sign up yet um, to give us a call because it's going to be on healthy holiday cooking. Ooh, and just we, what uh, we need. Yes, yeah. we are real excited. Yeah. Um, October 26th is the set date for the class, and we have a very um, limited amount of folks. We may actually end up having a second class. So if you're interested, give us a call now. Get your name on the list. Um, get it signed up. And okay. it is, it's a luncheon class. We, we actually serve lunch during the class. Um, and the cost is only seven dollars per person. Oh, so that is great! Yeah, you really yeah. can't get lunch and an and an hour of education anywhere else. No, like you that. can't. So no, you can't. We are we're real excited about that. These cooking classes have just really taken off this year, and we may actually be cooking up some other cooking classes wow. for next year already. So I love the idea of the holidays. Yeah, yeah. the healthy holidays one's yeah. going to be great. Yeah, don't have to have a tofu bird. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're talking about real food. Real food, okay. For real people. <laughs> okay. Um, and that is that's the the other thing, I'm glad you said that because it is, it's, there's so many myths out there. So, mm -hmm. like I said, just if you hear something or, or you're not sure, um, call myself, call Jan Halligan, registered dietitian. You know, she's yep. got the information on the food and the nutrition. Um, and do not hesitate or, or be scared to call in there. There is so much out there now yeah. and, and so many things that can be harmful if, if not treated correctly. Mm -hmm. So. 508-1765 is our phone number, and our usual business hours are Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. So call us or come by over at the Repel anytime. All right. Jody, thank you so much for joining oh, us today you. and sharing all the great information. And get signed up for that cooking class. That sounds like a lot of fun. It is. It's going to be great. Yeah. We'll see you again next time for BRMC's Healthy Connections.